It's just like a really welcoming community and it's just, it's a fantastic environment for anyone that wants to go here. There's hundreds and hundreds of campuses. Do you know what our ranking is? 36th, that's right. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. But during my college search, I was really torn between Bridgewater State and you know, another state school. And one of the things that really drew me here is there was more of a focus on on LGBT students. We have all sorts of really cool new policies that help protect our LGBT students. Like we have a preferred name policy. If your preferred name doesn't match up with what your name is on your birth certificate or what your legal name is, we have a policy so that your professors can know that without you having to tell them. The Pride Center on a day-to-day -day basis offers just a safe space as a lounge for students to come in and feel welcome and to meet people and to gain resources. We recently did an event on um, soon after National Coming Out Day that was about how to know whether it's a good idea to come out and also how to support somebody who's come out to you. We have gender inclusive housing, which means that you don't have to be put into your gendered housing and it's assigned with your sex at birth. It can be whatever your preference is. As a gay man that works in the Office of Institutional Diversity, I see the commitment to this work every single day. When I was a senior or a junior trying to like figure out what college I want to go to, I really definitely looked into how atmospheres were for LGBT students on campuses. And Bridgewater definitely has a really good atmosphere and welcoming atmosphere. Well, BSU is actually a wonderful community. Um, because of BSU and uh, who the people are on campus, I was actually finally able to come out as trans after, you know, 20 years of my life. I am extremely proud. I was very nervous coming to a campus um, somewhere where I didn't know anyone on here. Um, and honestly, I'm so glad that I came here. This is BSU. 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 Okay. So, uh, welcome to the Pride Center's uh, ev event. We're going to tell you a little bit about the Pride Center. I do have two students with me, um, and I will ask them to introduce themselves in a moment. Uh, but first, I'll just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lee Forrest, and I am the director of the Pride Center at BSU. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Pride Center in a moment, but first uh, let me ask Ricky to introduce himself, and then Christina can introduce herself. Hello, I'm Ricky. I use he and his pronouns, and I'm a senior biology major student. Thank you, Ricky. Hey, I'm Christina. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I, um, I'm a junior, I'm a psych major, and I'm an intern at the Pride Center. Great. Thank you, folks. I'm going to uh, share my screen. I do have a very brief presentation uh, that I'll share with you. When you get to come to campus uh, next fall, this coming fall, you will find the Pride Center in the Rondolo Student Union. It's really in the center of campus. And we have a lounge area there, and we have a library. We have a gender neutral restroom. Um, and we are open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. Um, we also uh, can be reached via phone, and you can also reach me via email, and I'll have all that information at the end. So the Pride Center, what about us? Um, we welcome everyone. We really want, regardless of your identity, we want all folks to feel comfortable in, in the space. Um, and like I said earlier, we will be returning to in-person services and events uh, this coming fall. Can't wait to do that. Uh, and I also mentioned that we have a student lounge, we have a TV, we have comfy chairs, we have desks, we have space if you wanna just uh, do your homework um, and, and spaces if you wanna socialize. 
We have several faculty that hold their um, office hours in the Pride Center. And like I said before, we have a single occupancy restroom, which is um, gender, gender free or gender neutral, gender inclusive, um, a library of books, magazines, and DVDs. And our goal is that you, that you find the Pride Center to be a home away from home. So not only is there a gender inclusive restroom inside the Pride Center itself in our suite, um, there are over 70 gender inclusive restrooms on campus. And there's a link when you get to, um, if you get a copy of this uh, presentation, you can click on the link. The only thing is you do need to have a BSU account and log in with your BSU credentials to see the links that are included in this PowerPoint. Um, with the gender neutral restrooms, we are happy to report that more are added um, every year. And we have basically, I think, five more that just came online. So uh, we're approaching close to 80 gender uh, inclusive restrooms now. We also have a student health insurance plan that covers all transgender related care. And we have um, the ability for folks to opt into sharing their lived name, also called preferred name by some. Um, you can in also include what your gender identity is and your pronouns. And this all can go into your student record so that if you're interacting with somebody, they'll be able to see that with the name that you go by um, and the pronouns that you use so that they can um, communicate with you uh, according to your identities. In terms of housing, we have a lot of housing that is um, queer friendly, so to speak. So um, our housing is based on someone's gender identity, not to the, the, the sex that they were assigned at birth. Um, and this includes non-binary identities. So uh, we do have spaces uh, for non-binary folks as well. Um, and we also have uh, housing that is basically gender free so folks of any gender can share a space together so we have female only male only non-binary only and then everybody and uh, there's also the lavender living and learning community that's available so that is similar to themed housing that's for folks who um, either identify as LGBTQ or as allies, and they want to live uh, nearby or with folks who also have those identities um, or are allies. And there's an associated academic four credit course uh, with that living and learning community. Speaking of trans and non-binary students, we have a student-led program called TIG. It stands for Transgender Identities Group. And what it does is it offers a safe space uh, for trans and non-binary students. Um, they meet monthly when we're not in the middle of a pandemic. Um, we have dinner together, the students meet together, and um, the Pride Center basically sponsors the, the dinner. Um, now, during the pandemic, we're meeting online. Um, and interestingly, we have guest speakers and next, next, this next session, which will be next week, we're having a guest speaker um, who's an expert on non-discrimination, so how to spot discrimination against trans folks and all the things that you can do about it and all the protections that are in place for you. So TIG is based in, uh, it has educational offerings as well as um, social activities. We have a similar uh, peer support group that's also student-led, uh, and this one is focused on queer folks of color. So they too offer um, uh, programs that are educational as well as um, social-based uh, events. And again, too, it is a space for queer students of color to share their experiences, affirm each other, support one another. Now, both for TIG and for QPOC, everybody is welcome to attend regardless of how they identify. But because a lot of folks that have minoritized identities um, are often asked questions and um, asked to educate other people about those identities, we do ask that if you're an ally that you uh, don't ask questions during these programs. There's plenty of other programs where you can ask all your questions, but for these two peer-led student, I mean peer groups, 
that these students lead, uh, it's, it's basically a time to give them um, a break from educating folks with different identities. But like I said, there's plenty of other educational opportunities um, where you're, you're encouraged to ask lots of questions. One of those is the Safe Zone Workshop. And that's kind of like an LGBTQ 101, but it, it does go a little bit deeper than that. Um, how to be an ally. Uh, we, we discuss a lot of um, uh, issues that, are, that pertain specifically to LGBTQ students. Um, and we include uh, pronoun etiquette and terminology. And there's just a lot of information that is covered. And anyone who goes through the Safe Zone training um, gets to have this this placard that looks very looks just like what you see this image here um, and that image basically uh, they, they post it on maybe their if they have a, a, a residence hall that they live in so they post it outside their door or if you're faculty or staff you post it outside your office door and basically that just communicates that you have been safe zone trained and that you are an ally to the LGBTQ community and I've heard a lot of students say how meaningful it is to walk by a, um, a residence hall or walk by a, a professor's office and see that it's just a great comfort that it brings to people Similar to Safe Zone, we also have QPOC 101. And um, you folks are lucky because we do have uh, Christina here, who's an intern who helped develop QPOC 101. You're also lucky because we have Ricky here, who is a co-leader for the Q QPOC Peer Support Group. So both of those folks will be able to tell you about um, the QPOC 101, as well as the QPOC uh, Peer Support Group. Um, so I won't say too much more about QPOC 101. I'll leave that for Christina to do. Uh, but one thing I do want to say is that the Pride Center is dedicated to fighting oppression in all forms. And so we do have um, lots of resources on anti-racism and we do work towards anti-racism on and off campus. All right, and I'm going to very briefly, when I'm finished with this uh, presentation, open it up to Ricky. Ricky's a, a superstar, so he, if you, you can recognize him in this uh, PowerPoint, and um, he'll be sharing a little bit about what it's like to, to work in the Pride Center. Um, and then Christina, again, will share about being an intern. But we do have student employment positions. Um, and it's really, it's a great opportunity to, to build community. You learn a lot about LGBTQ topics. Even if you know a lot now, I guarantee that you'll learn at least something new if you, if you work for the Pride Center. And you'll be making a difference. You'll be helping to create a safe and affirming environment for your peers, which is so important. And you'll get paid for doing it. So, I mean, talk about a good deal. And then lavender graduation. This is why we're all here, right? We want to graduate. That's why you're here. And so the lavender graduation is an additional ceremony um, on top of the BSU commencement ceremony. And it, it celebrates all of our LGBTQ and allies who are graduating. And uh, President Clark, the president of BSU, attends um, family members and uh, chosen family members uh, attend, faculty and staff attend. It's, it's a huge event. And um, if you get a 3.5 GPA or higher, you get a certificate of academic achievement signed by President Clark. And if you attend the event, you will also get one of these fancy rainbow stoles that are the hit on campus. And um, you can wear that at the actual con commencement too, which happens just a little bit later after the Lavender graduation. And then lastly, I just wanted to share about staying connected. So with your BSU credentials, you, you can go to our um, intranet page. We do have an extranet page. So that's the extranet page is open to everybody um, outside of BSU. 
um, but the intranet page is um, has the links that I was referring to in this PowerPoint slide. Um, there are some that are on both uh, the intranet and the extranet, so you can get information if you don't have cred credentials, but you'll get more information if you do have the BSU credentials. You can also um, like us or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as promised, if you have any questions or concerns, you just want more information, I am happy to uh, talk with you either via video uh, chatting like Zoom or through email. And my email address is lforest, with one R, at bridgew.edu. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. And I am going to open it up to um, Christina and ask her to share a little bit about QPOC 101 and what it's like um, for her to have the internship at the Pride Center. Great, thanks Lee. Um, hi everybody, it's great to be here and welcome. Um, so yeah, my name is Christina, um, like I said, and I am one of the co-creators of QPOC 101. Um, so essentially QPOC 101 is a training workshop that centers the experiences of queer folks of color. And so it, it looks at um, things like intersectionality, which is how different identities, um, particularly minoritized identities, intersect and create unique experiences. Um, so in QPOC 101, we talk a lot about uh, the experiences of queer folks of color and also really address how people can be an ally to the community. Um, so we've been delivering at that this semester um, and yeah, that's something that's delivered at least once a semester. So you can definitely feel free to attend if you're interested. Um, but um, yeah, anything else or just about QPOC? Anything? Um, yeah, you can, you can share uh, what it was like to have an internship, how it's yeah. um, impacted your educational experience. And if you wanna also talk, I know that a lot of people are curious um, and I'll ask Ricky to speak to this as well. Um, how how college is different um, from high school and any advice that you might have um, to to folks that are coming into college? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I initially got involved with the Pride Center um, right on my first day I went to visit and um, I started off with a student speaker speaker position at the Pride Center and then transitioned into having an internship at the center. Um, so that was in the fall of 2019 and I'm still continuing with that internship, um, which is a paid internship, which is great. Um, and yeah, it's been, a, it's been a really great experience. I've been able to really branch out and just learn so much about the community and about different experiences, even though I do identify as a queer woman. Um, there are many other identities that I don't identify with. And so I've just been able to learn so much and get to know other people in the community. Um, so it's just been such a valuable experience for me to be involved um, in the center. And so I would, I would definitely recommend checking out the events and trainings that are offered. And um, when, you're, when we're back on campus, there are posters all over the place. So you'll be sure to see those. And um, yeah, there are many ways to get involved. Even just, I like just hanging out at the Pride Center because it really is a nice space to just get to know people. Um, and with regards to how it's different, I mean, it's, um, I feel like, you know, back in high school, I mean, I wasn't out at that point, but I really didn't even see that there was a community. Um, I knew there was a GSA club, but that was about it. And here it really does feel like there's a community. Um, and like there's the opportunity to really help and make a difference, especially as a student worker. Um, so I feel very much like I can show up as my full self here. Um, I've also gotten to meet many people with different experiences and, and gotten to learn about them. Um, and just having like a designated, a designated space to really get to know people and hang out um, has just been really, really helpful. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's all I've got to share. Thank you. Awesome, thanks so much. So Ricky, your turn, if you can share what it's like um, being an employee of the Pride Center, how that's impacted your academic career at BSU, and also a little bit about the QPOC um, uh, peer support group. And last but not least, of course, how you find um, BSU uh, different from high school. Yeah, um, as a student employee, it's, well, it's pretty much like I had the same experience as Christina with like, getting to meet a lot of people. Uh, like different like backgrounds and all that and it really like i don't know sets the space 
to like learn more like you're not limited to just like your own bubble i guess you're you meet a, just a bunch of different people um like the first step i i made in like learning about like the different groups on campus was through the pride center i spent my first year as a guest at, to the pride center and just like getting comfortable with people and then like i moved into like a student worker role um my experience as an openly like queer person or at least gay i guess um at psc is different in many aspects i guess i was out only like to like a small group of people during high school and like even then it was like not not ideal but like bsu made it like a space where like i can be out in whatever capacity i want it to be and feel comfortable in that way awesome um I, I have to comment that it looks like you're you're angelic there because you have this this <laughs> wonderful light. There we go. Now we can see your face a little bit more clearly. Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting to have that happen. Um, well, thank you both for sharing your experiences. Um, and I think with that, I will end, end our meeting. And I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, I hope that this has been uh, uh, helpful for you. Um, all right so thank you and thank you ricky thank you christina for sharing your wisdom and your experience uh, with everyone else all right thank you folks bye-bye thank, thank you, you.